What's the best way of allowing your user to, having viewed a list of your contacts, click on the contact and go through to a page that displays information on that single contact? Here we have my table and uh, I'll just show you how my data is set up. We have a data type of contact um, and uh, it's all laid out in the repeating group that searches contacts. Um, I also have already got set up a page called profile um, and uh, this is the key bit for this lesson. If you're not using this, uh, you're probably using some much more cumbersome way of uh, sending data from one page to another. If you're wanting to display mainly a single uh, data type entry, then uh, the best way, at least in my opinion, is to set uh, on the page level uh, the type of content. This tells Bubble that this page is going to show a single contact entry. Uh, and then the way that we, we connect up, we don't have to send our own parameters, we don't have to work with the uh, unique ID for each contact, Bubble has it built in. Um, so let's go on the, the contact name uh, and then when the contact name is clicked, uh, we navigate to page and we navigate to profile and uh, it's going to add an error because I've said that that page is um, going to contain a contact, that's what it's going to be populated with, um, it, it means I have to send a contact through and so I'm saying send current sales contact. Um, something that uh, I often do by mistake is that if I'm duplicating pages in order to save time in my design process, um, I will then end up uh, working with a page which hasn't got the, let me show you, um, say I've, I've really built up this page and I wanted to duplicate it to incorporate design elements into other pages. Um, and when I duplicate the page, it's going to continue to assume that the page is intended to display really a single contact. Uh, and then I might get errors uh, coming up in the uh, debugger uh, because I've left that in there. Um, you can also let's select name because uh, that will add it to the URL. And let's see what that has done. So I click on Tony and uh, you can see it takes me through to uh, profile. Um, if you're interested in how to uh, change past the link, it gets it from up there. Uh, so uh, that's what has profile there, slash Tony, because I said to put in the name, and then hyphen, and then this is Tony's unique ID in the database. Um, but I've not had to extract that at any point because by using the workflow in navigation, um, the navigation step, uh, go to page profile, data to send, um, then uh, it means that I don't have to deal with the unique ID. A few things to comment on here, in case you're interested. Um, send current page parameters, that would send uh, if, if I go back onto my list page here, if I'd already stored additional values as uh, parameters in the URL, then it would, would pass those on to the next page. And if I wanted to add uh, additional values. For example, um, say uh, I wanted to have new user and then uh, yes. Um, that means that if someone is to complete this workflow and then they arrive on uh, the page, the profile page, it adds that parameter to the uh, to the URL, uh, and so what that would allow me to do, hypothetically, uh, I was building something that used this recently. That's what's on my mind. Is I can do a, a page uh, pages loaded, and I can do uh, only when get data from parameter new user is yes. So. That then allows me to dictate whether a workflow is run or not based on if the parameter is in there, based on if the user has followed a particular link or not. Um, so hope you found that useful uh, and hopefully that will save you some time in the future.